Show Your Work to Discourage Students Cheating Online, by Tom Worthington, The Higher Education Whisperer, the 27th of January 2021. These are the notes for the second of four webinars on engaging students in the online environment, each Wednesday, at 11 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time, Sydney. How do we keep students engaged with their major assessment tasks all the way through a course? I propose to have students record their notes and work for assignments, both to keep them engaged and make cheating harder. Be ready to contribute your ideas and experience of having students show their work. Professionals working in academia, research, industry and government document their work. This is to protect their own intellectual property and that of their employers and clients. It is also a way to record what has been done, so they, or others can build on the work. It is a way to plan what might be done next, as well as what has been done. For students this is also a good way to learn, by reviewing what they have learned, and planning what they need to learn next. As with working professionals, students can use their logbook to provide evidence that their work is their own. It is much easier to defend a charge of plagiarism if you have a time-stamped record of everything you did for a project, from the time it was conceived. I am an independent computer professional, educational design consultant of computer science at the Australian National University. I have a Masters of Education specialising in distance education from Athabasca University. I blog as the higher education whisperer.com. Records keep professionals accountable. Lieutenant James Cook wrote a detailed 354-page logbook as a trusted and coherently authored account with which to convince his backers in London, Owen Phillips, History and Philosophy of Science, University of Cambridge. Official files were kept in secure storage, administered by specialist staff who recorded who had which file out, when. Pages were required to be numbered and destroying a record without authorization was, and is, a crime. Professionals can use use this paper trail to protect the public interest, and themselves, by making it clear, who did what when. The advent of electronic documents has made it harder for the record keeper, as electron IC documents can be easily altered or deleted. However, it has also made it harder for the fraudster, as it can be hard to track down every copy and every log of changes. As an international online graduate student from 2013 to 2019, I kept a private electronic journal. In addition, I created one for each course. By the end of three years study, each journal had about 100 postings, 1,200 postings in total, made up of about 100,000 words. This was useful to keep notes for later use in assessed work. I would jot notes as topics came up and was careful to include a full reference to the source, so I could use these later. Student logbook for reflection. Another use for the journals was to make notes about my reaction to the course. Through the journals I in effect had a conversation with myself about what I was doing and why I was doing it. Student logbook as evidence of having done the work. If an examiner asked, where did this come from, I had a day-by-day, draft-by-draft, timestamped audit trail of my work on the topic, back to when I started. This not only included the what, but the why. As an international student this was particularly important, as the norms could be different, and even down to the page size. What technology to use for an electronic student logbook? The best tech to use is whatever you already have. This made it very easy for me to create journals in Mahara and keep them secure. One problem was that Mahara did not record when a student updated a journal entry, so they could game the system by creating an empty entry, then updating it later. This was later fixed, with each journal entry displayed showing both a posted on and last updated timestamp. I tried this out on Mahara and it seems to work. But is anyone using this? However, if students are not using Mahara, or another journalist system already, then asking them to do this is a burden. This is also a burden for the teacher who has to learn to use just another product. Also Mahara is much more than the student needs for a simple logbook. Writing prompts. There has been much written about the use of reflective e-portfolios for assessment. 
I have been trained to write, teach and assess reflectively. However, this is something the average STEM student and teacher finds very difficult. James, 2005, sets out how to guide physical education students through preparing an assessed journal. As the student will be mostly studying asynchronously, the teacher is not there to be saying, put a copy of that in your journal now. This has to be explicitly stated in course materials, ideally as part of a assessed task, so the student has an incentive. This can also be a good to mark a point in the course, an approach of synchronization of asynchronous learning, Worthington, 2013. James' prompts are ordered from more to less reflective. The first four are about the individual student goals, success, behavior, difficulties. The next three are about future plans of the student to learn skills. The last is a more traditional study question about the course material. These questions are not that different to ones which might be asked as study aids in any course. One of my frustrations as a student was that my answers to such questions were never looked at by anyone, let alone count towards assessment. In theory they help with learning, but in practice, like any student, I would tend to focus on what got looked at and especially marked. The e-journal gets around this problem by having answers go somewhere, perhaps be looked at and help me at least pass the course. Logbook entries can be visual. Logbook entries need not be just text, there can be diagrams, photographs, and with an electronic journal, video. In 2017, Dr. Dan ran a workshop for our new staff working on their reflective e-portfolio for the Higher Education Academy Fellowship. In 2018, he ran a similar exercise for our new tech launcher students to consider their role in a group project. In each case, the student is asked to make something with building blocks representing the topic and then talk about it. By talking about it, the students are encouraged to talk about themselves. They are also encouraged to take a photograph of their work. Moodle Wiki for a student logbook. The Mahara journal looked promising, especially as it is usually installed alongside Moodle. An alternative which looks promising is the Moodle Wiki. This can be set up so each student gets their own. I have created a logbook template which can be provided in the wiki. My template has a paragraph of explanatory text, then sections for the student to fill in. The student could create extra pages if they have a lot of content. But I expect one page will do for a typical student. They just click on edit the heading for a week and put in some content. The fill in the blank sentences are adapted from James P.43, 2005. The topics for each week are from the Australian National University's Tech Launcher Program, Awasthi, Flint, and Sankaranarayana, 2017. Questions for the work portfolio, weeks 4 and 8, were suggested by Tempe Archer, Our New Careers. The idea here is to provide a prompt for the student each week to start writing and avoid presenting then with a confronting blank page. The students are asked to write about the activity set for that week and a specific aspect of it. Jacques, Wahabi and Lekayu, 2020, refer to the use of logbooks in Google Drive for French first-year first-year engineering students learning online, but unfortunately give no more details. Kumar, Silva and Prelath, are, 2020, mention not having a project logbook as a problem for studio-based learning in a Malaysian course, but again provide no more details. Blockchain to stop academic plagiarism. Professor Rory McGreal, who taught me open educational resources at Athabasca University, has proposed the use of blockchain for their dissemination. While most OA are free and authors are happy to see their work widely, they still want to be acknowledged for their work. However, this is only a legal and moral requirement, the technology doesn't enforce it. Professor McGreal proposes to go a step further and use a blockchain to securely record who first created the work, and all the changes made and by whom. While technically feasible, using blockchain would throw up some challenges. As an example, nothing can ever be deleted from the blockchain, so if there was something which was incorrect, or harmful, or illegal, it would be there in perpetuity. The idea of using blockchain in academia might have other uses.
Recently I have been considering how students could record their progress with assessed work, such as assignments. One problem is to find an easy way for students to record what they did, but not be able to falsify the record. I have been looking at using some form of electronic logbook stored on the educational institution system, so the student can't tamper with it. An alternative would be a blockchain. Join Manisha and I at the webinar. Be ready to give your experience with online student interaction. For the registration link and more details, see Show Your Work to Discourage Students Cheating Online in Tom Worthington's blog, highereducationwhisperer.com.